Okay, let's talk about virtual condition with as it applies to orientation tolerances. Um, it, again, when we talk about virtual condition, we're talking about an MMC modifier being applied to a feature of size. So, so we're talking about a feature of size for an orientation tolerance here would be, and, and the MMC is applied. So virtual condition of mating parts are equal or provide a clearance to enable ease of assembly. Again, we usually use, we always use uh, MMC modifiers to assure that we have a, a good fit at assembly. So for internal features, what we'll do to get the virtual condition, we'll take the MMC and we'll minus, we'll subtract the orientation tolerances. And then for external features, um, you know, shafts, uh, cylinders, etc. Uh, we'll take the um, MMC plus the orientation tolerance to give us the virtual condition. Um, and and here, here's an example of applying a, a, a um, virtual condition to an internal feature of size. In this case, it's a slot. Here's our feature control frame. We have a slot 375 plus or minus 7 thousandths with a perpendicularity tolerance of 6 at MMC. We will calculate the virtual condition by taking the MMC of the slot, which in this case is the min slot, which is 368 thousandths, and we subtract from that the 6 thousandths orientation tolerance to get our 6 of 362 virtual condition. So the orientation tolerance is going to create a virtual condition that's smaller than the MMC size. The allowable variation increases um, as apparent opening sizes decrease. Um, and then we're talking about this actual really actually actual mating envelope of an internal feature is equal or greater to the size than BC. Um, so the virtual condition in this case would be the MMC minus the orientation tolerance. And here's what it would look like. Here's your virtual condition here at 362. And then it gives us this effective tolerance at the MMC for the center plane. Really that's what it does for us. Um, let's try the same with an external feature. Uh, orientation tolerance creates a virtual condition larger than the MMC size. So in this case, we've got a 349 plus or minus 7 with a perpendicularity tolerance of 6,000 supplied at MMC. So we have our MMC, which is 356, which would be the largest. Um, ex the largest dimension of this external feature and then since it's an external feature we're going to add the um, the orientation tolerance to get our virtual condition so that's how we would interpret that um, feature plane okay in this case what we're looking at we're looking at an RFS thing here you know we are not applying the MMC modifier in which case our feature center plane and our feature axis so the center plane is a theoretical plane at the center of an unrelated um, actual mating envelope a, the orientation tolerance applies to RFS on the feature of size applies to the center plane um, so here would be our tolerance um, our size has to be within this size and then the orientation tolerance of six has to apply regardless of feature size so what we need to do is to find these actuals here across and then find our center plane to make sure our center plane falls within the um, um, tolerance zone okay so so it's a little it's a lot more complex than what we were talking about with with MMC over here that you know regardless of feature size we first of all have to maintain that that our part is indeed within the feature size but then we're going to find these actual medians that are based this is our center plane based on the um, 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 the, the, the points the min and max points here across we're going to establish this and we got to make sure that it's within this tolerance zone. So again, RFS is a much more difficult um, uh, tolerance to be able to hold and, and to be able to check as well. And, and that's why you know, we use MMCs as much as we can, but um, we need to be able to deal with um, RFS tolerances as well. Okay, so let's talk about parallelism tolerances. Um, parallel features in undimensioned model must be queried to determine the angle. You know, we're, we're, we're assuming that these are 
applied angles at zero in orthographic views. Um, but angular relationships between parallel features are controlled with parallel tolerances. Um, they identify the appropriate datum features. They apply the tolerances on features parallel to datums using an orientation, or it can use a profile tolerance. And we're going to talk about those in a later chapter. And then tolerance zones are, are within an applicable size and location tolerances. <clears throat> Okay, so here we have a parallelism tolerance applied to a flat surface. Okay, so we have a parallelism tolerance specified orientation requirements between a flat surface and a datum plane. In this case, we have a datum plane A, and then we have a flat surface up on top. We have a, a size dimension here that controls perfect form. Um, and then we have our parallelism tolerance. Okay, so the feature control frame is attached to each surface to be controlled, so in which case here we attach this parallelism tolerance using a leader here to the surface. Rule number one results in control of parallelism between the surfaces, so the tolerance only usable as the feature is size departs from the perfect form boundary. Okay, so rule one states perfect form is required at, at, um, at the size limits. Okay, so in which case, we only realize this tolerance as we depart from the perfect form boundary. And then the tolerance zone is permitted to float within the size limits. Okay, so depending on where your high points of your surfaces are, that determines the range of the tolerance. Okay, so you establish first of all that your size tolerance is within, and then you come back and, and you establish whether or not your parallelism tolerance is met. Okay, let's explore parallelism tolerances on a surface a little bit more here. Okay, so this is how you would apply it to a model. You would have this dot with a leader, okay? And now if you're applying it to orthographic views, like we lots to do in this class, we could do it several ways. We can use a leader pointing to the surface, or we can attach the parallelism tolerance directly to the extension line. Um, so that that gives us um, the indication that this um, parallelism tolerance is, is attached to this surface. Now really what does this look like here? Um, really we got two um, parallel planes, max distance between two parallel planes to datum A, and that would be our distance. That's This is our tolerance right here. Now what we notice is that you know we have our perfect form boundary here at 448 which is our maximum material condition for this. Um, but we, if we notice our, our tolerance for our um, orientation here for parallelism does not really extend up to that form boundary. It just it's based on where our high and low points are for our surface that we're measuring. Okay, so so then this becomes the nine thousandths. That's all the surface elements shall lie within this these two between these two planes. Um, so that's the tolerance zone that's created by a, a, a parallelism tolerance. Now, how do you verify parallelism on a, on a flat surface? Okay, so we do this by using a dial indicator on a height stand and a surface plate. So the surface plate essentially simulates your, your, your datum A in this case. Um, by placing the part datum A downside on the surface plate, we simulate that. And then we can run this dial indicator over the top of the surface. Um, dial indicator is kept at a fixed height and moved across the entire surface. It only checks the orientation requirement. It does not verify the size tolerance. So we have to verify the size tolerance independently of, of the um, orientation tolerance. And then other methods such as CMM can be used. But here's here's how we do it. We have this feature control frame. It parallelism of nine thousandths. We, we put the part on the simulator and we drag the height gauge over top of it and as long as the full indicator movement is less than nine thousandths we have checked our part relative to this um, parallelism tolerance. Um, I'm going to pick up slide 22 with the next movie and this is going to be on parallelism tolerance applied to features of size. Thank you.